So some of you all may not know this about me, but I actually spent a good portion of my life living in Florida and specifically living in the Space Coast. I actually moved to the States when I was seven and from seventh grade on, I lived in and around the Nat, uh, Kennedy Space Center where the space shuttles were launching. And so on a recent trip into a Best Buy over the holiday break, I saw this when I walked into the door. And that is the NASA Space Shuttle Discovery Lego set. And this not only includes the Space Shuttle Discovery, but also the Hubble telescope. Now, for those of you that maybe didn't grow up in the 90s, you may not understand how awesome and important the space shuttle program was, not only to people living in Florida and living in this part of the country, but also to the entire country as a whole. The uh, ability to have these reusable airplane-like ships that we can send off into space and bring back and reuse over and over again was really awesome. And it was really cool as a kid, not only to see them launch over and over again, but also the experience of having them land. I can remember when we first moved into this area, uh, we were around the dinner table and we heard a big boom and we thought something had landed on the roof of the house. And so we went and we looked outside and we were looking on the roof and we didn't see anything. And then we walked back into the house and looked at the news and sure enough, a space shuttle was coming in. It was the first time I had heard that sonic boom of re-entry for these shuttles. So space shuttle discovery is a pretty important one. Like I said, it launched the Hubble telescope. Um, many of us have seen pictures of what the Hubble telescope took and now the James Webb telescope has replaced it with even more richer images. So this really is an important one. And there's some other statistics which I'll go over here in a little bit as well. I also took some footage of myself building this, a little bit of time lapse. I'll throw some of that in there as well. And then of course, I'm gonna give you a very detailed tour of this uh, space shuttle Lego set um, and also the Hubble telescope as well. So before I show you the shuttle and the telescope itself, I just wanted to go through some of the things here on the box. Now this is leg this Lego set is rated for 18 plus. Uh, it is number 10283 and it has 2,354 pieces. So it's, uh, you know, it takes a little bit to build this one. I think there were 17 steps in total that I went through or 17 packs that I went through. Um, it includes the Hubble, the Hubble telescope and the space shuttle discovery and two plaques that give you information about each, a little bit about them, which I'll show you here in a little bit. Uh, and this is, you know, a picture of what it looks like launching into space. And then, you know, just some pictures of the completed set as well as a picture of the Hubble telescope. So that's pretty much it for the box. Um, next, let me show you the Lego uh, set itself, as well as I'll take you a little bit through the book booklet, which is pretty cool and has some neat pictures in it. Okay, let's take a quick look at the uh, instruction manual that comes with the this uh, Lego set. Now it's a little beaten up obviously because I've gone through and built this set. Um, it opens up as usual with, um, if you've done one of these sets before, with uh, the history of what you're building, um, and usually in a couple different languages here. So it talks about the space shuttle program, the different orbiters that made up, as they're called, the space shuttle program, some of which, um, as you all know, did not make it back home or make it into space at uh, a couple times. And it talks about the, the number of missions that the Space Shuttle Discovery did. And it also talks about the mission of the Hubble Telescope when it launched and some other statistics and history. Um, it'll give you a little bit of background from the Discovery team um, and how they kind of went into um, making this Lego set, uh, all of the some information about future endeavors. Uh, since the retirement of the space shuttle program in 2011, as you know, there have been lots of launches since then, but no more space shuttles. So, um, so uh, it tells, tells you a little bit about that. And then it goes into some of the instructions of the kit, what you're going to be building and which bags go into building which sections until the very end. So bag 17. It'll do a little bit more about the telescope and the observatory. And then one of the interesting things, too, is as you're going through the booklet and through various steps, let me see if I can find a page here. 
It'll have these little did you know sections where it'll also talk about various aspects of what you're building. And so those are interesting. I really enjoyed reading those as I was going through the instruction booklet. Let me see if I can find another one here um, where it's just little tidbits of information about where you're at in the process and a little bit about what you're building. So this one says, with an orbital velocity of 17,500 miles per hour, the space shuttle crew traveled as fast enough to see a sunrise every 45 minutes, which is pretty awesome. I mean, that's kind of crazy. So they were, they were moving, as they say. Um, as you flip through here to the very end, as I said, it's 17 bags, and I believe it is 507 or 513, somewhere around there, steps. Let me see if I can get to the final step here in the build process. Yeah, 503 steps actually. So it'll also show you kind of like different configurations here. You can take the solar panels off, it shows you, and then how you kind of hook it in and get it set up to the, um, to the connected to the spatial discovery. Now I didn't like this configuration because I was gonna have it open. So I just kept the solar panels on when I did it that way. And then it also shows you kind of how to use the wheels. So, uh, which is another neat thing. I was really interested in that because as I was building it, I could tell that was gonna happen, but I wasn't sure how. And then it shows you different ways it can be configured. And of course, at the end, all of the parts. So that's it, that is the book. It has the space shuttle program logo here on the back but a really neat instruction booklet, just one to build this, which is really interesting. Some of them come with two, but um, this was more than enough to get this built. All right, so let's take a look at uh, how it is when it's put together, two pieces have come together here. And they obviously can stand separately, but there is this configuration where you can have what looks like the Hubble telescope as it would be coming out of Space Shuttle Discovery. This is when it was kind of being put into orbit. Now, uh, the, these plaques here, and I'll kind of put them over to this camera so you can see, these plaques have um, a little bit of statistics about both the Space Shuttle Discovery and the Hubble Telescope. So I'll just read some of that for the Space Shuttle Discovery here. And it says STS-31, which I think was its kind of official number. Um, it has a wingspan of 78.06 feet. It had, did 39 launches, so a lot of reusability on this one. It was active from 1984 all the way up till 2011. So a long time, it was in play 25 years, about, or 26 years. Orbital velocity, 17,500 miles per hour. Max altitude, 350 miles. It orbited the Earth 5,830 times. And it spent one year, 22 hours, 39 minutes, and 33 seconds in space. So in the 25 years or so, 26 years or so that it was in use, it spent about a year or so in space, which is pretty cool. The Hubble telescope itself was launched in 1990. It weighed 24,000 pounds, 4.72 miles uh, per second was its velocity, and its deployment altitude was 350 miles, which is really neat. So now that we've covered a little bit of the statistics of this, let's take a look at it itself. Now, the space shuttle itself sits on this little base here, which is really neat. It allows it to have this cool little angle. I'll see if I can slide it back on here. Yep. So it uh, is on this base. And then the other thing is it has this little arm that attaches, so it looks as if the, uh, the Hubble telescope is attached and kind of floating in air. But there's a neat little trick here. There's actually this little, and let me see if I can remove the Hubble telescope here. You can see that there's this little stand that is on here. And I didn't really even realize this till I had it fully put together. It shows it on the box, but because they've made it black, it hides in really well. So the reality is it's not necessarily hooked in um, or floating in, in air. It actually does slide over here. So I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, as you can see, if I take this out, let me take this out here and kind of move this down. So the, the bay doors can close and open. This is really neat, right? So this is what it looks like when it's closed up and then you can open the bay doors as well. And they have these neat little lights that go in here, right? Kind of just lights that would be shining in, you know, as Lego does a really good job of replicating what they really would look like. Um, the cockpit also can re be removed right? So you can remove the cockpit here. Um, there's four seats in this cockpit, and then there's this other little area underneath. I'll pick it up and show you here so you can see kind of what's underneath it. Um, the one thing that's really interesting is that this Lego set did not include any uh, characters or people. And 
that's strange. Um, I, I haven't really researched why they did that, but I would imagine it's because there were so many different astronauts that flew in Space Shuttle Discovery in its 20 plus year lifespan and usage span. So um, I think they probably would have had a struggle in picking what the characters look like. So they just made a decision that there would be no um, nobody in, his, in this one. So it's really neat. I'm gonna close it up here. Um, the front, you can see what the front looks like, kind of this front profile here with the nose and, uh, and the cockpit. Um, and then the rear, you have the engine uh, thrusters here um, that hook in along with the wings on both sides. And that's one of the pain points of having Lego is they don't always stay together. So let me hook this back in. Okay, we're back at it. So if you wanna move the wings here uh, or the flaps on the back, you can turn this little engine piece and that will move it. Only this one engine uh, thruster rotates, the rest are just in there solid, but this is to kind of rotate it. And then the really neat thing is if you push this little part, this flap in, the wheels pop down. And that's really neat. And it's, I mean, it's really sturdy on here. You can kind of roll it back and forth. So I love that. It can be in kind of this mode if you want it just sitting on the desk. You can obviously rest it on the stand itself, but it could just sit like this, or it could sit with the wheels, uh, the wheels tucked in. So you just kind of pull that back out, and then you can tuck the legs and the wheels back up. So that's it. I mean, you can see the underneath side here, what it looks like on the top. Uh, it has the USA and the flag on this side, and then on this side it has NASA Discovery, and then you can see here on. On this, it has NASA and United States, and then it does it on the same side, on the same way on the other side. And you can see that it actually moves, it's not identical because it moves the flag based on the way that the stripes and the stars are supposed to be pointed. It actually is in a different direction based on what side it's on. So uh, yeah, so that's it. You see the little Discovery logo up here, but overall it's really, really neat. Um, and this is one of the, my favorite ones that I've built. Over the last, I would say four years, three or four years. Um, I might have started during COVID actually. Each year over the holiday break, I build one of the larger Lego sets. And so far, they're actually in my office. I'll show you a shot of that, those. I built Kylo Ren's shuttle, uh, I think a McLaren, and also um, the Razor Crest, and then the Batman Tumbler, which is now sitting in pieces as my kids have rolled that off the desk onto the floor and crashed into a thousand pieces. So this is my latest one that I've done and it's pretty cool. All right, next I'm gonna go and give you a little bit of overview of the Hubble telescope. So as you can see, the Hubble telescope itself has its own stand that it comes on. So it is kind of a distinct unit. Um, it's actually the first thing that you assemble when you get this kit. So in addition to it being able to be a part of Space Shuttle Discovery and kind of on its stand, it, it will have its own separate stand. Now, um, the, it's while it's intricate, there's not as much that you can do with it. Obviously, the solar panels do articulate um, and move up and down. Um, so does this hatch kind of opens up as well. Um, and these pieces as well kind of move up and down. So, um, and there's a little hatch here, but this doesn't open, it's kind of solidly in. Now, the as I said before, the, the uh, Hubble telescope was launched in 1990, and it was the first telescope to really capture really complex, deep space images that uh, many of us growing up were amazed by when they first started to come, come out. Um, and, and so it recently, the James Webb Telescope that launched, I think last year, has replaced some of those images because it can now capture them a lot more vibrantly and more accurately, but this is still in operation. It orbits the Earth. There were five shuttle missions, including some from Discovery here, that, um, that repaired and maintained it. So astronauts have been maintaining and repairing this for um, 30 years, 30 plus years now. So it should be in orbit uh, for a couple more years, I think another 10 years or so that it will still be in operation. But once again, we have the James Webb Telescope up there. So that is doing some additional things that this cannot do. But really neat, intricate. You can see on the back here, it has the NASA logo. Um, obviously these little solar panels are pretty cool. The one thing I don't like about them, I would say, is that I can never seem to get them straight. They're always kind of flexing. I don't know if I did something wrong there, but they're always kind of flexing. Um, but it's really just one of these neat things to have on display as um, kind of a uh, person that grew up with uh, not only the images that this produced, but also just the shuttle program as well.
Thanks again for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that look at the Space Shuttle Discovery and Hubble Telescope Lego set, and also learned a little bit about Space Shuttle Discovery and the Hubble Telescope. Certainly I did in doing this video. As always, I appreciate every like and subscribe and comment here on the channel. Let me know in the comments below what you liked about this video, if you'd like to see me do more video on Lego, or any other suggestions you have. All right, thanks again, bye.